This here is Romana Dedulo. You guys probably heard of her, or maybe not. I don't know. But she's called the Queen of Canada. That's what she calls herself. And she's made some royal decrees. I've talked about her a couple times on my channel before. But apparently there's this official W5, like, breakdown of her, of who she is and what she's up to and the shenaniganery that she does and all that junk. I wanted to watch a little bit of this, but before we watch some of this kind of documentary style thing, I want to talk about Ramana Dedulo and who she is, how I know who she is. I follow Ramana Dedulo on Telegram. That's where she posts on Telegram. She's got around 100,000 subbies on there, but they are ardent supporters. They'll do anything for her, anything. A hundred thousand people who will do literally anything for you, up to and including open fire on crowds. That's scary. That is scary. Anyway, there are some other people I follow on here that are just something else. This one is called the QAnon group. In every single Trump group, every one of them, I keep finding these ridiculous ads for very obvious scams. JFK Liberty coin, the only coin that Biden doesn't want you to know. Buy now and make Biden cry again. Biden left in tears. The storm is coming. That's a QAnon shout out. The biggest project from Trump office for this year, our president, make it easier for all. Of I mean, it's such obvious nonsense, right? How do people fall for this? Anyway, we're, we're here to talk about Ramana Dedulo, not <laughs> ridiculous Trump scams. Her name on here is HRM, Her Royal Majesty, HRM Queen Ramana Didulo. She has done like a number of royal decrees. All right, just look at some of the decrees that she's got. Um, let's just check. Water. Yeah, here we go. I just searched for water. I am HRM Queen Ramana Didulo, Commander in Chief, President, National Indigenous Chief, and Queen of the Kingdom of Canada. You know the funny part? She's giving us her title right now. She's not Indigenous. She's from the Philippines. That's a, a quiet little secret that she doesn't like getting out, but okay. Quick interjection, this won't take long. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end. YouTube bases video reach off of watch time, so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further. Liking and subscribing goes a long way too. Finally, it would be awesome if you guys checked out my Patreon. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. Hereby issue this royal decree effective immediately, dated today, January 1st, 2024. Oh, it's a new decree, okay. Authorizing the National Treasury of the Kingdom of Canada to allocate one trillion backed by gold and silver and open an account using quantum financial system in the name of the we the people of the kingdom of canada investment wealth fund with the following conditions one investment wealth funds to be invested in the kingdom of canada only in areas of oil gas gold silver mining extraction processing hemp trees Planting, processing, manufacturing of hemp products and houses. Hemp houses, okay. I, not knocking it. I'm a fan of hemp. I mean, I don't smoke weed or anything, but the paper industry very obviously wanted us to, you know, hate weed. So big hemp fan right here. Critical minerals slash precious metals. The Kingdom of Canada's National Economic Corridor, National Clean Water Oil Gas LNG Sewage Pipeline from coast to coast. Farming equipment, water irrigation for farmers. I mean, she's giving us a list of things she intends to use with this. One trillion dollars in gold. Yeah, I don't know where all of the older ones went. She apparently erased all the older ones. Okay, here we go. One through 94. Yeah, this is the actual original, I believe, royal decrees. God loves you. God. So bizarre, dude. Uh, everything is bizarre. Even the headshot she's got here is just bizarre. Look at this. What's with this haircut here? You guys seeing this haircut? This shit is wild. Straight up. This is what you get with a cult leader. She took over a school, a local school, in some really tiny town and outnumbered the town members. I'm super sad. I can't find the originals. Well, anyway, it was crazy stuff. It was like... Anybody who teaches wokeism or CRT in classrooms gets 30 years in prison. Uh, second offense is 
execution or some other ridiculous nonsense. And I have like a billion clips. She used to be the founder of like, or she was the founder of the Canada First political party. And she ran for office long and long ago, trying to take a position as the leader of the Canada First party. And everything fell apart when she lost. She declared herself like the winner by default because people cheated. And the white hats in the military that installed Donald Trump installed her as the dictator of Canada. Hello, Canada. I'm Romana Didolo. By the way, this is uh, 2021. I'm the founder and leader of Canada First. As of February this year, 2021, I am the head of state and commander in chief of Canada, the Republic. In case you're wondering who appointed me as the head of state. Yeah, a little bit. I'm kind of wondering. That's like the forefront of my mind right now. Go on. Commander in chief of the Republic of Canada. What's with the long pauses, by the way? People who appointed me are the White Hats and the U.S. military. She says it with, like, such deadpan seriousness. It's crazy. Together with the global allied troops and their governments. The Gats, you say? The same group of people who have helped President Trump. Oh, I thought there was more of that sentence. She just stopped it, like, halfway through the sentence. Okay, go on. The same group of people who have seized the assets of the Vatican Church. The same group of people who have seized the assets of the fake royal family of the UK. Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is a hundred questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide, if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. So the Vatican and the royal family of the UK, which is fake, by the way, don't have any more money. Installed by the central bankers 200 plus years ago. The same group of people who have seized the assets of the 13 family bloodlines. The same group of people who have seized the assets of most, if not all, royal families of Europe. And I would like to send a very special thanks and greetings to our digital soldiers. Oh my god, digital soldiers. That's a QAnon dog whistle. It's not even a dog whistle. It's just a shout out. Hey, QAnoners, I'm, I'm a QAnoner too. If somebody calls themselves a digital soldier, they're a QAnoner. There is no, like, in between. Now, I would like to address the vaccinations and injections happening oh my God. across the Republic. As far back as late February, early March of this year, Right immediately, I took my oath as the head of state and commander-in-chief. I did. Uh, totally. I believe her 100%. Yep. Commander-in-chief, I declared Canada a vaccine-free nation. Wow, that was a long pause. Which means all of the vaccines <clears throat> and injections happening across the Republic is unlawful, criminal, and is crime against humanity. Because she determines what are crimes against humanity, and she determines what's lawful. See? Know this. Inside the Republic, the penalty for crimes against humanity, treason, economic sabotage, and bioterrorism economic sabotage is death god these pauses you will be tried for crimes against humanity under nuremberg code 
and if that is not enough, as the head of state and commander-in-chief of the Republic of Canada, I will convene a military tribunal. She will convene the tribunal, okay? And charge you with crime against humanity, treason, bioterrorism, and economic sabotage. Bioterrorism. All of which carry, as I've already mentioned, death penalty. So anyway, that's uh, Romana Didulo, I guess how it's pronounced, Romana Didulo. And uh, she weaseled her patrons into buying her this humongous uh, tour bus type of deal that she drives around the country, stopping in every town, picking people up. This is, she told her people to show up to a police station and do a citizen's arrest on the police, and the military would be there to back them up soon. And uh, so, that, like, after a while, the police locked themselves in the station because they got, like, 100 people outside who were absolutely unglued from reality, psychotic, and ready to do something insane. And uh, she shows up shortly thereafter and meets with the leader. And oh boy, was he excited. Oh my. Oh, it's so nice to see you guys here. Oh, the old intuition was going crazy this morning, boy. Yeah. And we literally just finished talking about it. Joanne texted me. I'm Dude's name is Frank. She's coming here right now, isn't she? And then I read the text and like, I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, <laughs> I literally just thought of it. There it is. It was yeah, so great. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm barely holding it together coming across the parking lot there. Mm. So nice. Well, barely holding it together. You know why? She's the Queen of Canada, of course. I will begin a live stream here, just okay. to let everyone know that I'm here as the Queen and Commander-in-Chief to observe, to make sure whatever process is being done, is done fairly, and whoever is arrested by the citizens is given respect, dignity, and honor. This is just painfully stupid. Very huh? good. That's it. Very good. I'm here to make sure it goes over peacefully. Correct. Yes. And uh, I have sent a message to the Commander in Chief of the United States Armed Forces. And that's Trump, I guess. Sorry. Two days ago. Sorry. I sent a message to the U.S. Commander in Chief two days ago, letting him know that I'm here and that I'll be here. Right. And that I request. Why would Donald Trump give a shit about you being at this random police station? Why would Biden? Why would anybody? Aside from the fact that she's like trying to enter by force. By the way, it didn't end pretty for Frank. Frank got manhandled by the police. For a backup to make sure that this process goes peacefully. Thank you, sir. So, you can Very good. Very good. All right. Yeah. All right, Frank. All right. We're right here with you. Okay, great. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. This is just painfully sad. Just sad. The police had no idea what was going on. They didn't know how psychotic these people were. So they like they locked the door. They locked them out of the police station because they didn't, you know, this is effectively a terrorist group that exists. It's a cult. It's an insane group. They got all pissed off about it and start spouting off QAnon stuff through the door. Why, you think COVID's real? Do you? Yeah? yeah. Well, well, my, my boss got a million bucks to start making COVID hand sanitizer bottles. Before it hit. Wow, you trying to tell me that hand sanitizer bottle production increased at the beginning of COVID? How about that? Knock me over with a feather. Wow. It must be some conspiracy with big hand sanitizer to produce all these bottles. Totally, totally. Go on. Yeah, yeah, and, and he knew he was getting it long before COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he wears red high heel shoes down the main street with the elite. You know what? Red high heel shoes in QAnon brain is a sign that you're like, that you take advantage of kids. Red high heel shoes mean? Yeah, and I caught him. And then I came after your Chief Gilbert. You know, the one you haven't seen in about eight months, that one? I know you guys talk. Like, I can't even get all of these conspiracies straight. The reason they're over here talking through the door in the first place is because somebody pulled up to the police station in this car right here and just got out and booked it into the police station. They unlocked it for him. He ran inside. They locked it again. 
This car is still running. This one right here in frame is still running. Insane. These people get help, okay? Anyway, you, you get the idea. You get the idea of who this woman is. I may get hit with like a copyright something or other, but we're going to give it a shot. Let's give this a watch, this documentary, I guess, about her, and we'll see what it has to say. I am Her Royal Majesty Queen Romana of the Kingdom of Canada. A small town held hostage. She thinks that she has been sent here to save people. We don't know what they're going to do. They're unpredictable. Well, so if there was Frank. Did you see Frank? See him right there. There's Frank. This must be at like another location Frank showed up to. While some fall under the spell of its charismatic leader. It's a digital fantasy. She's a content creator. And she's brilliant at it. Others feel threatened. I don't believe that she's brilliant at it. I don't think that's what it's about. I think that she is taken by the fantasy. She believes it. Before this guy even talks, I know who this is. She took over a school in a town called Richmond, Canada, I believe. I think this guy was the mayor. Richmond had a total of like 900 people or something. Yeah, 154. I'm sorry. There are 154 people in Richmond, Saskatchewan, Canada. And that, the last census was 2011. She comes in, takes over, lives in a school, an abandoned school there, and outnumbered the people in the town. And I think this is the mayor. I don't remember. Anyway, let's keep listening. Somebody's got to help us out. We're running out of ideas. You will receive not one, but two bullets. Yep, she's psychotic, and we're skipping beyond any music. Self, the Queen of Canada. Others call her a cult leader. Morel oh, she's a cult leader, yes. Marilla Fernandez enters the bizarre world of Romana Didalo, a woman who set up a compound in Saskatchewan, terrorizing the residents who live in the rural community. That was Rich Mound, yeah, 154 people. One of her people owned this old school and said she could stay in it. So she moved her caravan and her whole everybody in, and um, they outnumbered everybody in the town. Suddenly she has control of a town in Canada. In Saskatchewan, you can almost always see what's coming. Here in the province's southwest, there are acres upon acres of flat farmer's fields. 20 kilometers east of the Alberta border, the farmland gives way to a small town, Richmond, Saskatchewan. Once a bustling hub for ag Super tiny. Agriculture, oil and gas, Rich Mound is now mostly inhabited by retirees and young families looking for an affordable place to live. With only 120 residents, it's generally a pretty quiet place. Does it only have 120 residents now? I thought it had 154 in 2011. That was the last census. But in the fall of 2023, all of that changed. These, uh, these clips that we're looking at are from the news footage about it when it was happening. I remember watching it. Here we go. It's it's even the same shot right here. See? Tonight, a community is on edge after a far-right conspiracy theorist and her followers move in. Dude, I've been following these people for years. You guys have no idea. Those blaring horns to protest the unexpected arrival of this woman, Romana Didalo. She calls herself the Queen of Canada. A woman who was Chris. Oh, this is at the police station. She was handing stuff out. I have this video too. She was giving out food to the people who were there to citizens arrest the police at the police station. Across the country to share her strange and violent messages that promote the murder of police, politicians, and ordinary people. Yep, that's true. She does this by issuing her official orders. The royal decrees that I have issued, basically removing all of the shackles. See, this is why I don't have Telegram open, because they give me stupid dings. And the only reason I ever use Telegram is to follow this crazy stuff. So we're closing Telegram. Goodbye, Telegram. Thank you. You are no longer needed. Sorry about the dings. Let's step back. Decrees that I have issued, basically removing all of the shackles put by the corporation government. I have also said that there is no more politics and no more politicians. She tells Canadians not to pay their debts. Queen oh, she told them not to pay their taxes, not to pay their water bills and everything. 
And they stopped paying them, and guess what happened? They had their water shut off. They had their wages garnished. They had everything taken from them. Because you have to pay that stuff. That's what it is. But these people believe she's somebody special. They think that she's got some special link, some special connection to the white hat military or whatever other nonsense. It's insane. Queen Rumana's in power and we're not paying any more bills. Utilities are free. And she also pushes conspiracy theories. This isn't out of context, guys. This is real. She really said this. This is one of her royal decrees, okay? This is real. A favorite about the danger of the COVID vaccine. Here's how she would punish healthcare workers who vaccinated children. For each child that you have harmed, you will receive... Harmed meaning uh, given a vaccine to. You will receive not one, but two bullets on your forehead. Think very, very carefully before you touch that needle. That's like just nurses. Normal nurses, anybody who gives a vaccine to anybody ever, everyone all the way up the line, get help, Ramana, okay? And, and the people in the cult, get help. Oh my God, dude. We're certainly there. We're monitoring the situation. And she does not look happy to be in that seat. And making sure that if there is any indication of criminal activity, that we will be there and we will investigate that thoroughly. So it's not clear who sent these? At this point in time, that's part of our investigation. I'm sure that it was Romana Didulo who sent the cease and desists to the mayor and the everybody else. Or it was somebody in her name, part of her compound or whatever. It was her official group or whatever. This is why the RICO Act exists. Of course, that's an American thing. It's not like a uh, Canadian thing. RICO was, in, was created with the intent to be able to take out everybody all the way up the line. Somebody is told to murder somebody else, to take out a hit on somebody. The guy that pulled the trigger, the guy that hired, that paid the person, the guy that asked the person to hire the person, the guy all the way to the very top who nodded his head in the back of a bakery. I'm describing a real situation, Ferrara's Bakery in Little Italy in uh, Manhattan. The guy who nodded his head in the ba back of the bakery to approve the hit. Everybody, all the way up the chain, gets arrested. Like uh, 15 people for one murder. That's what the RICO Act was intended to do. Organized crime had found loopholes in the system where there'd be one fall guy at most. Or they'd get like three people and there'd be reasonable doubt because it could have been any of those three people. And if you don't have beyond reasonable doubt in a courtroom, you don't have a case. Mobs and gangs and everything, they've, they've found these loopholes and they've exploited them for years. So the RICO Act exists. Again, this is Canada. I don't know what Canada has. I don't know if they have an equivalent or what, but something needs to be done for real. I don't give a shit. Arrest everybody. Start arresting from the top. Arrest Romana Didulo and her little um, group of people uh, for sending these letters. And if the letters continue to come, then arrest the next little level of people down. And if they continue to come, arrest the next little level. This is exactly what happened with Charles Manson. Nine people killed some, some kid and some woman, I think. Charles Manson didn't lay a finger on anybody, and they arrested every single one of them. Why can't we do something like that with real genuine cult leaders and members who are genuine dangers to society, honestly? The RCMP says they can't make any arrests because they don't know who made the threats. Like, I don't care who made the threat. Arrest Romana Didulo. It was done in her name with her approval, and she didn't denounce it. She didn't tell people stop doing that. She said, yes, I stand behind it. But W5 did find out who sent at least one of the threatening emails. Remember Mary? She saw one of those letters posted online. It was posted by a man by the name of, and it was my dad's name. What was that? Oh my God, dude, her dad sent the letter. Like My heart just sank, my stomach dropped. I felt like I was gonna throw up. I couldn't he, believe- Her dad shouldn't be the one in, well, he should be in jail, but. He shouldn't be, like, the target of the investigation. 
Why isn't Romana Didulo being targeted here? I don't understand. Like Charles Manson. Yeah, okay, get the guys that pulled the trigger or whatever. Get Charles Manson too. Are you kidding? I couldn't believe he had gone that far and done something like that. I feel ashamed that somebody that I love and care about would threaten that to somebody and make people feel scared and worried for their lives that something might happen to them in their own home, in their own community. Mary says the Calgary Police Service did meet with her father, but only cautioned him to not do it again. This is stupid, dude. I'm sorry, man. We need to be tougher on cults, cult members and cult leaders. We need to. We cannot let this shit happen. Scientology does the same thing. They literally went around and, and they threatened people. Scientology threatens people. Anybody who's critical of them. They haven't, I mean, I haven't hit the radar yet, I guess. I'm not, I haven't been fair gamed yet. But you know who has been fair gamed by Scientology? By the way, JASA, doing some initial research. Canada doesn't have a RICO Act equivalent. Most recent source was August 18th, 2023. Yeah, I didn't think so, unfortunately, but... They need one or something. Something needs to be done. Check this out. Let's just look. Um, I'm just going to Google who is Leah. No. Yeah. Leah Remini. Who is Leah Remini? The very, very, very top is just her celebrity status. Just information about her, her Wikipedia page. And now the very next one after her Wikipedia, we have Leah Remini, the facts, Leah Remini, the facts.org. And we've got like pictures of her that are like um, really negative. I don't know. They just look really bad, like propagandistic images that are designed to look really bad. She's fair games. They cr created a whole website dedicated to trashing her. They even got her family members to get on film and talk about how evil she is. And they paid who knows how much money. God, how much does it cost to get this to the very top of the search rankings for a celebrity tens of thousands of dollars per month who is leah remini and they're at the very top of the search rankings i knew people who did who did search engine optimization seo sat next to the guy when i was a software engineer dude did seo for a lot of our clients and that's like all he did all day every day and i sat there and i maintained the servers for him and stuff and I know what goes into it. I know what he was paid. I know what the company was paid. Tens of thousands of dollars minimum went into getting her, to getting this page put up to the very top of the search rankings. You can do this for any of Scientology's enemies. Who is Chris Shelton? He's an enemy of Scientology also. Within, let's see. So we've got one, two, three, four like search results down four search results down and we've got a list of you know this website a list of the evil things that he supposedly did I mean, it's all fabricated nonsense there's no reason to believe any of it's true no like not one single word on any of these websites they get his family members to to talk bad about him and the whole nine scientology goes after people that they don't like they fair game them it's really disturbing really disturbing the United States government should have some way to go all the way to the top and take down the entire organization. You know, Scientology as an organization from the very top framed a woman in an operation they called Operation Lovely. Operation Freakout was another one. There's a book written by Tony Ortega called... The Unbreakable Miss Lovely or something like that. All, all about like how this happened. This reporter was writing about Scientology and they framed her for murder. And they were they almost got her put away for like 15 years until the whole thing was like the lid was blown off all of it. And she had this best friend who was like helping her through it, taking care of her dog. And she's like depressed. And she had this friend for like years. And she's just like he, he moved in to help her because she was... Like, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't drink, she's just burned, you know? And he was a Scientology spy, that guy was. Who went to jail for that? Everybody who touched that project anywhere along the line, or even knew about it, should have gone to jail. Everybody. I think like two or three people went to jail for attempting to frame somebody for murder and almost succeeding. For sending a letter to 
embassies in the United States uh, threatening to bomb them in her name. And they got her fingerprint by getting her to touch a clipboard. Out, They had some guy walking around outside her apartment asking if she would sign like a, a petition for something that they knew that she stood for. She said, sure, I'll sign. And then realized she touched it. They got her fingerprint and they lifted it with tape and put it on bomb threats sent to embassies. I'm not even joking. That's the kind of shit that these people do. Operation Snow White is crazy, too. Oh, oh, absolutely. The biggest infiltration of the U.S. government, I think, ever. Scientology broke into U.S. government buildings across not just the U.S., but across the world, like embassies and everything, and destroyed any files related to Scientology. Anybody who knew about it anywhere along the line or approves of it even should face consequences for that. How did we get Charles Manson in jail? How did we get even a couple of Scientologists in jail? How did we get mobsters put in jail? Like uh, Teflon Don? That's a real mobster. The, f the leader of the five families? How did we get them? The RICO Act. And they needed to be in jail for people's safety. They were running an organized crime unit here. Why is Romana Didulo allowed to continue doing what she's doing? It's unacceptable. I don't care who wrote the letter. She should be the one in jail. And the person who wrote the letter. Do you think he should have been arrested? I don't know. I oh, abs are you kidding me? wrestle with that one. My dad is absolutely a financial threat to himself, a financial threat to my mom. If he's not going to physically carry out acts of threat, he's certainly emotionally and mentally threatening people by sending these letters. W5 emailed the RCMP to ask why Mary's dad wasn't charged. Their answer, to preserve investigational integrity, we are unable to provide information on our investigational steps or evidence. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Great. Awesome. It's gathered. As for Romana Didolo, we asked several times for an interview, but never received a response. It's like a compound. It is a compound. It's a cult compound with fences and guards and the whole nine. Do you think it's easy to leave that place, I wonder? This came as little surprise since Didolo has never agreed to an interview with mainstream media. But that didn't stop us from trying to find her. It wasn't easy because her entourage kept moving around. Days before we arrived, the group left the school compound and moved to a farm just outside of town. They moved to a farm outside town? Yeah, I thought they left the school. Five producer Chad Derrick and I headed there. You know, if they had just, like, stayed in the school and not harassed anybody, if they had just done their thing, if they hadn't, like, videotape anybody at the store or threaten people, send these cease and desists and all that... Then done any of that stuff, nobody would have cared. Yeah, I'd go right up, right up to there. I see the. There we go. That's the property. Yeah, we could pop out here and have a look. The group's vehicles are tucked out of sight and well beyond a perimeter fence. You know, there are some groups that are um, built upon violence. They encourage sociopathy or psychopathy they encourage people to suppress emotions and things like that that's not this group they exploit people's emotions they don't want to suppress them they want to exploit them so they encourage people to get like really emotional over what they're seeing like oh they're mistreating children and we have to do something to help the children you know for that reason i would say that these people probably are not a threat to the outside world to the degree that a cult that tries to suppress emotion would be. Like Scientology tries to suppress emotion. They don't try to get people to realize, oh, oh my God, the children are being so mistreated, you know? So these people are less threatening to me than Scientology is, but they're a more immediate threat because they're going from town to town, like messing with people. How are you? But within minutes, a truck from the compound arrives. I can't tell if you're saying anything. The phone's in front of your face. We're from W5. We just want to talk to Romana or we want to talk to you. 
Do you want to come and talk to us? Will Romana come and talk to us? We get no answers before the driver speeds off. Dude, is he just like driving through his um his farmland? It looks like they farmed that and they laid down seed and stuff. Is he just like, or is this land barren? I can't tell. We visited the Richmond School the next day. It appeared that work was being done. How are you? Is Ruben around if you want to talk to us? Once again, we asked Didalo's followers if she would speak to us. This thing with uh, filming other people like this, it's an intimidation technique. And they did this. Uh, Scientology does the same thing. They do the exact same thing. They'll even bug people's houses and stuff. They're famous for having done that in the past. Does she have anything to say to the people of Richmond? We never did hear from Romana Didalo. She and her group braved the cold Saskatchewan winter, live streaming every night from the school, leaving Richmond residents like Roland Davis wondering what lies ahead. They closed the uh, playground next to the school because, you know, this is where kids used to play because they were worried about what would happen if people were gonna come up and talk to the kids or try to kidnap them or what, they had no idea. I would have never dreamed I would have a cult living in my backyard. This can't be happening. Like it's, I wanna wake up from the dream sometimes and say, okay, this, they're gone. Let's just, you know, go back to normal. It doesn't happen because they're here. They're real. Disturbing stuff, man disturbing stuff got to feel for these people let me know what you think about it in the comments uh, really sad for them